CM365 All about Carnatic music Today I'll be sharing something with you on the subject of nada. Now anything that is heard is a shabda. For example, the clapping of the hand or the sound coming from a fan or the sound coming from a running car. All this could be said to be shabda because of the fact that they are non-musical first thing. Secondly, they have a short duration and uh, there is no fixed frequency or vibration to this kind of a sound. Now, nada is quite different from the shabda in the sense that nada is a musical sound and uh, reasonably it could be said to be continuous and there is a fixed frequency and it is very sweet and pleasant to hear. Now, in the Indian thought, we see that there have been a classification of nada into two as ahata nada and anahata nada. Now, ahata nada happens because of the interaction of two objects where we say that a and hata meaning friction or strike or beat happening and uh, this can be physically hurt by us. The concept of anahata nada is something very unique where they say that the sound which is coming or emanated cannot be heard physically and uh, this is more about an inside or internal feeling of the sound, the experience of the sound internally. And uh, every musician for that matter, we could say at a common level, actually listens to the anahata kind of nada inside him just before, you know, a fraction of second before he is able to sing a particular raga alapana. In the case of rasikas also we see that many times the music from that particular concert lingers in their mind for a long time even after the concert is over. So there it's like, you know, the though the music is not there, it is actually running in the mind. But these are all at a very fundamental level. Actually, the scriptures, what they say about Anahata Nada is that it is something which can be only heard by the sages and saints who have developed an inner ear which listens to celestial music in their hearts. So this is a very, very deep concept that they have tried to establish in the Anahata Nada, which cannot be, it also means that normal human beings actually like us cannot hear this Anahata Nada. Coming to the Ahata Nada, we see that in the music context, there are different ways in which this Ahata uh, Nada actually is being produced. The first of course is the vocal music where we see that the wind strikes the vocal cord to produce some kind of a sound. Now in the case of instruments like Veena, we see that the hand, the fingers are used to plug the strings and that way the nada is produced. And uh, other example of course you could take is uh, sitar also in this context. And if you look at the bowed instruments, for example like the violin where the bow actually, there is a friction of the bow happening with the string and that is how the sound is produced. And even in the go to vadyam we can say that or the mandolin this kind of a concept happens. Now in the wind instruments we see that it's a different concept where the air from the lips actually go into the hollow pipe and make sound by striking inside the wall. So actually what is happening is that the wind uh, air is blown by the mouth and that hits the wall of the particular instrument and creates different kinds of sound. So here obviously you remember the flute, the saxophone, the clarinet, nadaswaram etc. where the wind becomes the principal uh, medium through which the uh, nada is created. The next category of course are the percussion instruments where you see that uh, probably striking fingers on a wood or a piece of stretched skin or on a clay pot. There are different ways in which we strike the instrument and pray, create this kind of a nada. Of course the wood and the skin concept happens in the mridangam. And uh, for Gatam, it's, it's like the clay pot which is being struck here. And in Kanjira also we see that it's a skin which is stretched and put in a, uh, around, a, you know, a, the wooden uh, kind of a base. So these are all different kinds of percussion instruments where the nada is produced. Now coming back to the word itself nada, we see that na stands for life force or the prana. 
and da stands for the fire or the agni so prana plus agni actually produces nada according to our concepts uh, that is uh, given in our scriptures and this is again reiterated by shri tyagarajar in his composition moksha mogalada where he says prana anala samyogamu where you see pranava nada prana anala samyogamu valla pranava nada saptaswara mulai paraga so where he makes a mention of the fact that uh, concept which I was mentioning about the prana anala samyoga coming together to create the concept of nada finally we could say that uh, in the concept of the nada the microtones actually actually first come the nada manifests as the microtones first the shrutis then then next step is the semitones or the swarasthanas then the tones or notes or the swaras come next and further the nada manifests as grace notes which uh, could be called as the murchanas or the scale and the ragas thus we see that the melodic portraits or melodic perspectives are very very unique to indian music and the nada plays a very very important role in terms of creating this beautiful concept cm 365 all about carnatic music